Hello, everybody, and welcome to the secret history of living inside your aquarium. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today, as the title implies, we are going to be talking about my favorite top 10, and I'll probably throw in a couple extras because I cannot help myself when I'm talking about shrimp or plants or when I'm talking in general. So we're going to try to go through this quickly. If you want more information on building things like shrimp hides, areas where uh, the babies will hang out and be sure to uh, grow to a size in which then they're safe even if you have fish in there. Um, you can check out a lot of my other videos. I have uh, two playlists dedicated to shrimp. So if you have more questions about that kind of stuff, uh, feel free to jump in. So today what we're going to talk about are, are plants that specifically I think are just amazing for shrimp and we're gonna go one through ten and it's actually kind of reverse order because I know I know the internet I know you guys so I'm gonna do it in reverse and give you guys the best in my opinion first and then we'll work our way down uh, there doesn't need to be an order necessarily but uh, there's a loose order to things. Also, before we get going, I wanted to say that things like choya wood, uh, which is a cactus that's dried out that you can get excellent for baby shrimp, even for adult shrimp. It's got tannins. It's got uh, little cracks and crevices to for uh, the babies to hide. And it also has uh, all sorts of surface area. And in in keeping shrimp, the name of the game is surface area because that's what the babies graze on, that's what the adults graze on. And so let's get that out of the way, that choya wood, also a great choice. Any sort of manzanita or driftwood you're using, just fine. These are not plants, they are algae, and uh, these are the marimo moss balls. So uh, also just a fine choice as well. But while we uh, are jumping into the list, look at all these newborn shrimp on this round pelia, which is known as subwassertang to Americans or suswassertang to uh, Europeans. And this is a great plant. It's in a kind of uh, in-between stage uh, of what it would do outside of water and it can be trimmed and grafted onto things just like a moss and you can see here I've got a bush of it growing off of a rock if I were to trim it more and more like an aquascape I could actually get it to be very dense but my uh, preference is to keep it kind of loose and that really allows the adult shrimp to graze as you see here they're the they love grazing on it and uh, the pregnant shrimp feel comfortable there, whereas they're usually in hiding. Well, they like this area. Uh, this shrimp is about to uh, have babies, and so she, actually, she just may have let one out. I can't tell. Uh, but it, regardless, this is a safe place. They feel um, very safe in there, and you can see, you can get quite the tangle of it. And it may not look the best if you're trying to aquascape, but you can mix this with any sort of moss or any sort of other plants, crypts or, uh, you know, any sort of other plants. And even in a low light, low tech situation, this plant will do great, whereas CO2 will make it uh, a little more hardcore. You can see everybody's fighting over some algae pellets I just put in there right now. So the name of uh, Suswasertang is... Uh, Loma Ropsis lineata, if you're uh, trying to look for the scientific name, and uh, it's just a, a great choice, and I would give it number one because of how, uh, how flexible it is. Next up is going to be pearlweed. So that is this stuff here, which I've chosen to plant, but you can also just let it float and be a mess because sometimes shrimp... They want to hang out up at the top of the water. Let's see if we've got, yeah, we've got some right here. They want to hang out at the top. They want to eat stuff that's floating by, especially neocaridina or algae uh, shrimp, filter feeders like bamboo shrimp. But you'll see them just cruising around up at the top of the tank. And uh, one, it can give them a little bit of protection if you've got fish in there. And two, it's got lots of surface area. And that is pearlweed. You can grow it again as a as a long plant, or you can grow it as a dense 
chunk of stuff that just floats around. And you can see this is a very low light, low tech tank, no furts or anything. Um, and just a bit of crushed coral and some um, fluval stratum substrate in it. Uh, its name is Micranthemum micranthae uh, moides, uh, the pearl weed. And so uh, if you search pearl weed, you're going to find it. It's usually inexpensive. It grows super fast, sucks lots of nitrates uh, out of your system or ammonia. So it's a great choice uh, along with like water wisteria or something like that to pull out all those um all those other chemicals which you may not want in a shrimp tank or compounds. All right, the next one we're gonna have to skip up to another tank, but I just wanna show you uh, before we get on to number three uh, quickly that all these tanks have shrimp. Some have rock hides like this, like a, a dragon stone works just fine for shrimp hides. Um, also, we'll, we're gonna get to it later, but the hornwort and even frog bit, duckweed, that kind of thing, can provide a bit of a place for shrimp to hide. Uh, same with wood, we've got Malaysian driftwood here, spider wood, and you can see that there are shrimp even with uh, white cloud minnows, danios, and uh, we've even got uh, some cichlids in here, some Honduran uh, red red point cichlids. What I wanted to mention is that I don't think that these plants are necessarily the best for shrimp because you want grazing area, you want the ability to grow in low light usually because you don't want to blast your shrimp with a ton of light and stress them out all the time. But here we've got, you know, a ton of different crypts just growing in this low tech tank. We've got pink panther, pink flamingo, whatever you want to call it, the wind daddy. And then we've got undulata. We've got, um, actually this is a, a, a micro sword. It's a purple, uh, night sword. And then we've got a uh, crypt nuri of several varieties growing around in here. And those are just fine for shrimp. I mean, they'll graze on them and everything. They look pretty. They have a low profile and they can grow in a low tech, low fur tank. So I just thought I'd point that out. And also before we hop to another tank, I wanted to point out that you could also just throw catapa leaves in and have hornwort and this is java moss and that's a really typical way to uh just keep your shrimp uh going just fine is just some wood some some java moss some hornwort and uh catapa almond leaves they're doing just fine these are neocaridina and uh, caridina babalti and down below we had uh malawa uh shrimp as well so just thought i'd show that you can have all sorts of ludwigia or um you know various plants bacopa uh, uh cabamba fricata floating all over the place that's just fine too but it's not i wouldn't say it's tailored for uh, a productive shrimp colony it's just it so happens to be in a lot of my tanks and it does just fine like this cabamba furcata if it were in a higher tech tank it would be denser and then there would be more uh grazing opportunities in between those little needle leaves all right so let's go upstairs check out the rest of the list and really get this going we're going to be talking a little bit less so hang on with me and i have a couple questions for you uh and a couple reminders of how you can win some uh thousand dollars worth of stuff coming up uh if you're still stuck with me here uh so let's let's hop upstairs we'll see you in a sec all right guys so up here i just wanted to point out that it doesn't always need to be sheer practicality now these do have a lot of surface area these are red tiger lotus, uh, and they are a Nymphaea zenkeri is, is what you'd call them. Hey, look at this. This is pretty cool. The little blue dream neocaridina hanging out on the, uh, the back of this ram's horn snail. But in any case, they are a great choice for a low light tank or high light tank. This is a high tech tank. Uh, you'd call it that. Grows very quickly, sends up runners all the way to the surface. The shrimp like to hide amongst it up in here. You can see they're grazing on things. And they feel safe underneath that leaf because, uh, you know, they just feel like the, the predators aren't going to find them as easily f seeing their shadow. So the other thing that can't be overstated uh, is basically the beauty of it. So, you know, you're keeping shrimp. It's a hobby. 
look how beautiful uh, some of these plants can be with your shrimp. So there's no shame in adding some just really gorgeous plants into your shrimp tank. They also provide great grazing opportunities and I'm really glad that we've got some little blue neocaridinas on there uh, along with this uh, Sulawesi uh, shrimp hanging out here and the Malawas. We've also got some Japanese algae eating shrimp and they dig all of this stuff as well too. Um, so moving on down the line, I would say that Christmas moss is another one that, you know, Java moss is well known. Here's some Christmas moss. It grows out into a long kind of spindly, uh, looks like a Christmas tree sometimes if you can see it from above. Let's try to scoot this stuff aside so you can see it under the light. Um, see, it's got a little less dense and a little less rat's nest uh, gathering which uh, if it's on a stick or stone and done prop properly and kept up with, this one hasn't been trimmed uh, very seriously, uh, you can get it really dense and it's a great little hideout, kind of like a little eave for them to hang out. And if you look under the microscope, it's just full of nano, uh, you know, all, everything from plankton to uh, little seed shrimp and other little critters that uh, your shrimp are going to love to eat, as well as any of your nano fish. So a lot of uh, fish that you may keep with your shrimp, your celestial pearl danios, or um, uh, you know whatever you want to call them, galaxy rasboras, they love it as well. So next one is going to be. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, the next one is going to be after the Christmas moss at number four. Its its Latin name is Vesculara montagnii. Montagnii. That's a mouthful. All right, so we've got hornwort here. It's been planted, so it's not quite as dense as sometimes you see it. Uh, it can get really dense. It can float. It's like the pearl uh, weed or pearl plant, um, very similar to that. And it, it's a great collector of algae. Um, if you want that, if you keep it up high by the light, it grows up to two or three inches a day in ideal conditions. And... Um, its name is Ceratophyllum demersum, and that's at number five on the list. Let's keep on cruising through. You can see why it would be a good choice for shrimp following my reasoning from before. Look, there's shrimp eating uh, the algae off the needles as we speak. All right, so the next one is going to be right here, which is red root floater. I love these. There's nothing wrong with... Uh, water lettuce or anything like that we've got can we see the guy if i move the light yeah we've got some more neocaridinas hanging out right under here eating all the algae and just debris that kind of gets trapped when you have a calmer tank if you have a little bit less flow or your flows deeper underwater these are a great choice they do well in highlight and uh, probably a little bit of iron in there and then lower on the nitrogen is what I've found does best. They also oftentimes bloom up at the top, and you can see these ones are starting to bud, but they have these really pretty, uh, delicate little flowers um, that are very nice looking, as well as they really provide a great spot for fry, for fish or shrimp as a, as a safety net. They break up the shadows of light coming through, and, you know, here's a baby shrimp right here hanging out. Um, if, see if there's any others. Uh, there's baby shrimp, though, that love hanging out there. Plus, they look really cool. And so as long as you don't need highlight on the plants below it, it's another great choice. Uh, and its name, uh, Latin-wise, would be Philanthius uh, fluitans. Uh, sometimes harder to find, but places like aquaticarts.com have, uh, have most of these plants available. Now... Let's hop over to my larger tank, uh, my 40-gallon, and I wanted to point out Anubius. So Anubius, this is Anubius Cophifolia, we've got Anubius Fraseri, we've got Anubius Gold Coin. Any Anubius, you're, I, I'm, it's not going to steer you wrong, you know? It's, it's a great plant, it's resilient, it does well in low light, 
and uh, it comes in a lot of varieties. I happen to think that the Anubius Petite Nana, like this stuff, does the best. Shrimp like to hang out on it, but really it's just a low-maintenance plant and another place for your shrimp to um, hang out. So, and again, here's some of that Christmas moss rather than the Java moss. Uh, it's got some more nodules, and it grows out in a general uh, Christmas tree fashion. I've not trimmed anything here, uh, and you can see down here, this is the Java moss, which is more of a rat's nest going on than that. Also, alongside of the um, downstairs, the number one, the Siswasertong, which I think is just great for shrimp, uh, this is another great plant, which is Bulbitis or Bulbitis mini. Uh, it's a fern. It can grow immersed and grow out of your tank up tall and beautiful. It's just a great, great plant. Uh, also very easy grow, high-tech or low-tech. Pretty much everything on this list, except for one we'll get to, can grow in a high-tech or a low-tech tank just fine. All right, so Anubius Petite Nano would be the one I would suggest, and if you can spring for the money, why not get uh, one of the variegated albino or pinto, whatever you want to call it, one of the ones with white leaves. There you go. All right, so next up would be Busa philandra, and Bus is hard to categorize by species because everybody's marketing it as something, you know, whatever the newest hot thing is, you know, you got skeleton down here, you've got um, Bellende, Catharina, um, you've got all sorts of different uh, species, but then there's a lot of different strains within those. And so it's a beautiful plant. It really brings out the subtleties of your shrimp, especially if you're keeping something that's not necessarily a neocaridina. Maybe you're keeping crystal caradina shrimp or something like that. It can grow in the same water parameters as that. And also it has uh, a nice sparkle to it, which can complement like a malawa or um, siluasi, some, some kind of shrimp that may not be super bright on its own, but it just complements a nice nature feel. Here we've got like a red Godzilla um, up here we've got brownie ghost and tricolor. So there are so many options. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. You guys can pick whichever one tickles your fancy, but it looks great with shrimp. Uh, these are about to flower in probably by the end of the month. So uh, it also has these lovely white little uh, flowers underwater, which I love. And again, you can see this tank has some serious predators like this eight inch tall angelfish and these cribs and uh, and some of the mid-sized tetras. So I definitely uh, recommend having hiding places for shrimp. There's shrimp in here, but you're not going to see them in the day. You're going to see them at night hanging out very close to the wood structures or down at the bottom eating algae, hiding in uh, this naja or guppy grass. To me, it's not quite dense enough uh, to be the best recommendation, but it's another choice as, as well as the Java, uh, the Java moss or Java ferns for that matter. We've got Java ferns as an option too. But coming in at number nine, we're going to, we're going to hold off on the hardest one for last. And we're going to do number nine while we're right here. And that's going to be Madagascar lace. It's an Aponogeton Madagascarensis, and uh, that's its Latin name. And it is just a beautiful plant, very delicate. It has surface area as well as spots where it can trap food for the shrimp. So that's just uh, a plus as well as it's a funky plant. It's a bulb. It'll grow in gravel without any ferts or anything. Doesn't need a ton of light and it can get very large. So it's probably better for a bigger tank. But the Aponogeton family is a great choice. It'll make your shrimp tank uh, shine or your, or your fish tank. And it's nice for fry too. This one's a little thinned out right now. But it can get... Um, pretty thick and the leaves can fold over on themselves and kind of make a little tangle if you get a couple of them going in there. All right, so back to the other tank uh, for the last one. And the last one, you're going to need high tech uh, to the moon with this. It's Rotala Wallichia. Um, right now, mine is not in the tippiest, toppiest of shapiest, 
but it is a favorite amongst the shrimp. It has a lovely purple hue, uh, a lovely color to it. Um, here we go. Here, get some light on it. And uh, it's very feathery and uh, Rotala Wallachia. It is beautiful. It is delicate. You need to treat it with ferts, and I have a whole video on that. So if you're curious about any of these plants, especially like Sawasertong, I've got really in-depth videos on all of these, uh, well, not all, but most of these plants, and you can learn more about them and the shrimp in those, but I would recommend this. They love eating all the algae and debris that just gets caught coming off the filter. So like I said, you want to win money? You want to win shrimp? We're giving away shrimp colonies. We're giving away all sorts of goodies uh, coming up here. Uh, on the 20th of July 2019 so if you want in on all that jazz uh, simply go back a couple videos you'll see the ones I'm talking about on my page and uh, on my YouTube channel talking about giving away a thousand dollars and that's we're giving away over 15 prizes free shipping from aquaticarts.com Shrimp colonies, $100 gift cards, $50 gift cards, $25 gift cards, free shrimp food for a year, all the stuff you need for a shrimp starter setup, and free shipping uh, of overnight, whatever you'd like. So check them out. Use the coupon SECRET history all in caps and then the number 15 no spaces secret history 15 and you will get 15 percent off everything there if you've already used that code use secret history all in caps 10 secret history 10 and you will get 10 percent off everything including their clearance section which they have some killer deals in including some really cool shrimp their gold nebula shrimp which i have in here also um that have this lovely little sparkle color. They go great uh, in the other tank that I showed you with those uh, Bucephalandra or Anubias. They're just a really nice selection. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Tell me your favorite plants uh, on there and if you've used these, if there's any I left out. And I said it was going to be a short video. I lied. I'm sorry. I couldn't stop gabbing, and I can't stop gabbing now. But thank you so much for joining me in this video. I will talk to you later. Please like, thumbs up, share if you think this list is helpful to any of your groups or friends. And uh, most of all, take care of yourselves and your people around you so that you have a strong foundation, happy life happy uh, environment and support system so that you can take care of your critters and uh, the feedback will come back in. When your critters are happy and everything's doing well, you'll be happier. Uh, bring that nature inside. Feel that love, that energy, that calm, tranquility. That's what it's all about. And thank you for watching. Uh, if you really want to support the channel, if you feel like I have earned uh, your support, uh, check out my Patreon page, which will be linked below as well, or our Facebook group if you just want to share pictures with some of your shrimp or fish. All right, guys, take care. Take care of each other and swim on. Bye.